Welcome to the video, I'm Dying Legacy and you're thinking about picking up Final Fantasy XIV or you've picked it up and you're wondering where to start but most of the beginner's guides you've seen are over an hour long which is daunting to say the least but don't worry it doesn't need to be and it's all a lot easier than watch times can lead you to believe so here's a short guide running you through the startup I'm going to make it as listenable as possible so you can have it on the background if you've other things to do, but I will be going over what to expect and how to ease yourself in for a whole lot of fun. Let's start with servers and data centers. It's best to choose one closer to where you live for the best ping, as ping is very important for a smooth playing experience. However, bear in mind to benefit from playing with friends and being able to join their free company, it's best to be on the same data center and world. Free companies are basically guilds in Final Fantasy XIV. We do have the ability to visit other data centers, however, it's not the same as sharing servers together, as there are restrictions such as not being able to summon retainers or purchase houses, and a few other limitations. After that, your next step is going to be creating a character. Bear in mind, everything here is basically aesthetic. Races do come with varying stats, however, they are exceptionally minimal, and they're not going to impact your gameplay in any meaningful way, so feel free to go crazy. Next part of character creation is choosing your first job, or class as it were. Bear in mind you can have every job on one character, this includes all forms of crafting and gathering, and you can swap job on the fly whenever you want, with the exception of when you're doing dungeons and such. You can pick these jobs up as you play the game, a lot of them are level gated as well as only available in certain expansions, but the choices you have right now are available almost right away. Take note, the current choices aren't the actual jobs, they are preliminary jobs that evolve into their real jobs at level 30 through job quests. You'll get job quests every fifth level and when you complete the level 30 quest you'll become the main job. But for now let's go over your choices. Starting with tank jobs, we have the marauder who will become the warrior and we have the gladiator who will eventually become the paladin job. For the healers you can try the conjurer who will eventually become the white mage and there is the arcanist who becomes the scholar. The arcanist also unlocks the summoner job that is the magical ranged damage version of the scholar. Um, sticking with magical range, by choosing thaumaturge you'll eventually unlock the black mage. If you're more interested in physical range damage you can try out the archer who becomes the bard. If you prefer to be up close and personal there is also the pugilist who becomes the monk. And there's also the lancer who becomes the dragoon. As I said previously, you can unlock and use all the jobs on one character. So for now, go with whatever interests you the most. One more thing to keep in mind is that every job levels individually. This includes crafting and gathering jobs, which are classes rather than just professions, meaning you need to level jobs one by one. They are basically alts, but on one character. However, the summoner and scholar level together, so they'll always be the same level. Once you choose a name for your character and log in, you'll start off in one of the three main cities, Rudania, Limza Lomenza, or Alda. The city you start in depends on the job you choose. While doing the main story, the world will open up to you and you can visit or spend your time in whatever city you want. But once you start and are allowed to move around freely, you'll have a choice of either using a controller or a keyboard and mouse, each with separate UI layouts. So first things first, head to the settings and mess with your UI, put things where you want or where you'd be more used to. If you want to know about the UI layout system in a little more depth, I have a UI guide on my channel that you may find useful. I'll link it in the description for you. I'll also link my tips video as it has tips for settings you can fiddle with as well as to make the game a bit more accessible for you. Once you're good to go with the UI, if you fiddle around with it that is, the next step is to follow the main story quests, or MSQ for short. Main story quests have their own icon, which kind of resemble a golden grey meteor with an exclamation point in it. Side quests and other forms of quests have their own icons as well. However, the main quest itself can be seen on the top left of your screen, so you can use that to find your way, or wherever you moved it to if you fiddled with the UI. This will lead you through mechanics and such, and it's also the main way to unlock everything in the game. Everything will have main quest requirements before you can unlock them. Jobs however don't, they only require you to have reached a certain level on a job, but things like dungeons, trials, raids and other forms of group content will require you to reach certain points in the story. The same goes for unlocking your first mountain grand companies. Grand companies are a form of faction in Final Fantasy XIV, they have no impact on content, but they do have their own achievements, rewards and vendors, but you'll learn all that when you get there through the story. You can also change your grand company after a while if you want. You'll also pass a bunch of side quests, which are just a gold icon with exclamation points. You can just ignore these at the beginning as they offer nothing except very small amounts of XP. 
You'll also see blue icons with gold exclamation points and a plus sign. These unlock content, so keep an eye out for them, as the main quest line doesn't unlock everything unless it has a place in the story itself. For instance, you can unlock the ability to have a chocobo to fight alongside you in combat this way, and also your first mount, which unlocks at level 20 called My Little Chocobo, which will be in your starting city. While exploring your city, you'll notice aetherite crystals, Interact with these to unlock fast traveling. You can fast travel between the little ones. The giant crystals, however, you can fast travel to straight from your map for a small amount of gill. You'll find these huge crystals all over the world and are the main form of fast travel. You can also choose one of these to be your home point, of which you can fast travel to for free with a small cooldown before you can travel for free again. While we're talking about the main story, bear in mind that the base game, A Realm Reborn, is very rough around the edges. You can treat the Final Fantasy XIV leveling and story experience largely as a single player game, with numerous multiplayer dungeons and trials sprinkled throughout the journey. The early game does not do a good job making it easy to play or quest together with friends. Aside from the dungeons and trials, the game isn't really meant to be rushed. If you find yourself bored of the endless fetch quests and dialogue, you are probably not alone. The level 1 to 50 main story experience is considered to be super slow. But the build-up will all be worth it. Keep in mind that patch content was meant to be drip-fed to players over months and years, but it all evens out and jumps in quality once you hit the first expansion, Heaven's Ward, and the pacing becomes much, much quicker. This goes for your choice of combat skills as well. You will unlock skills as you level and as you do job quests. Job quests are important to do when they're available, as the rewards tend to be important skills. So in short, you'll start off with very few skills that'll ease you into the jobs, these will eventually expand into an array of skills, so the early game is very slow combat-wise as well. Something I could have gone over earlier is that, yes, as I mentioned during the character creation part of this video, there are roles, tank, healer, and damage. However, it's more a responsibility than it is a role. Every job's main contribution and content is damage. Tanks deal damage while protecting and keeping an eye on the group, healers deal damage while occasionally healing up the group, and damage dealers, well, they deal damage, but they also maximize the damage of the group and offer other support and buff skills. I also have a video for each role on the channel as well. Again, I'll link them in the description. At this rate, I'll be linking my whole back catalogue. Okay, once you're doing the main quest and seeing the sights and getting the grips of the combat, you'll come across the Novice Hall. This is a tutorial of sorts that will teach you how to play the roles. It has a green shield icon with a gold sprout on it, and the MSQ does eventually bring you to it, if not indirectly. The Novice Hall will ask you to complete small scenarios. My advice is to do all the trials it offers you for the class you're using, as when you do them all, you'll get a free ring that provides a 30% increase on XP gains up to level 30, which is very handy to have at the beginning. You can also keep that ring to use on every job you pick up. Around this time, you'll unlock your first dungeon. That'll also unlock the daily roulette. The daily roulette lets you get large amounts of XP gain for completing your first roulette of the day, as well as rewarding currencies for armors and such, but that's more of an endgame thing. This will expand as you progress through the game, unlocking trials, alliance raids, normal raids, leveling dungeons, and level cap dungeons, each having a once a day reward. There are new dungeons, raids, and content in every expansion, so your amount of content to do within this roulette will keep increasing. Dungeons are instance content for four players, where the aim is to fight through a few bosses, which reward loot for every kill. Trials are for 12 players to fight one boss, but you only get loot from higher difficulties of the boss while doing the trials. Normal raids are also for 12 players, which are essentially harder dungeons and trials. Alliance raids, on the other hand, are for 24 players, and are typically longer dungeons with a lot of loot. Eventually, you'll visit the Woven Garrison that'll unlock PvP. PvP has its own rewards and currencies. PvP is standardized, so there's no gear levels, and has its own skills, so everyone's on par no matter what. And it will also add a PvP roulette as well. While at the garrison, you will automatically switch to your PvP hotbars, so you can set up your hotbars here, rather than having to go directly into a match and frantically setting it all up there in the midst of combat. You will need to do this for every separate job though, so bear that in mind when you want to do PvP and you've unlocked a new job. You will be shown a lot of the content just through the main story, so I won't go over much more of it, as you'll experience it for yourself as you go. But I will let you know that when you finally reach the end of A Realm Reborn, you will automatically gain the ability to fly in all the Realm Reborn zones. 
However, in the expansions, you will have to earn flying by doing a bit of exploring and a bit of questing. If you get bored of doing questing, you can always head to the Golden Saucer. Once you can freely travel around, you can head here in South Tanalan. Fans of Final Fantasy will know what this is right away, but for those of you that don't, the Golden Saucer is a giant arcade theme park that comes with activities such as chocobo racing, where you breed and train your own chocobo to race, as well as minion battles, so all the little pets you'll gain through the main quest can be used in mini-games. Uh, that's not to mention the amount of mini-games that you have, such as obstacle courses and fashion contests and such. This is a high-roller place with its own currency to earn that can unlock bowling mounts and rewards. And also a card game if you're into that sort of thing. You can gather cards here and you can also get them as drops from bosses and other content. You can challenge NPCs to card battles and you can also card battle against normal players. Because everyone loves a good children's card game. In case you're a hoarder like myself or you love the idea of in-game economies where you can peddle your own stuff, which Final Fantasy XIV has through the market board, then you'll want a retainer. A retainer is a personal NPC that can act like a bank and can hold all your stuff. They can also sell them on the market board for you. And they can also go on little timed quests for you to gather items and materials. Retainers have their own leveling system as well, but bear in mind they are level capped by the job they have. Basically, if your retainer is a paladin and your paladin is level 20, your retainer can only reach level 20. In a major city, you'll be able to look for an NPC who will allow you to apply for a retainer. However, if you are on the trial version of Final Fantasy XIV, you won't be able to apply for a retainer. If you are subbed, you can have two, but you can increase this for cold hard cash through the MOG station if you really have trouble keeping your bags clutter free. When you have a retainer, it might be time to dabble in crafting and gathering jobs that I brought up earlier. As I mentioned, these are jobs. You swap to them like any other job. They have their own job quests and skills and require their own gear. These include fishing, woodworking, armor smithing, cooking, among others. Everything has a purpose down to furniture crafting which if you are looking for a lot of gill along with your new retainer, is a good place to start. And to top this guide off, housing. Everyone wants a house, but are very difficult to obtain. But in the meantime, you can purchase your own apartment that you can decorate and organize to your heart's content. In every housing sector that the MSQ will bring you to, is an apartment complex. You can purchase an apartment directly from the receptionist. Apartments have no time requirements or login requirements, but housing does. If you aren't present for a long time, your house will automatically be put back up for sale and you'll lose it. While apartments are yours until you either move server or delete your character. But hey, I think that covers everything without going overboard or into way too much depth, especially when you're just starting out and all you want or need is a little overview of what you're getting into and what you need to know above all else. So, I welcome you to Eorzea and I hope you have a fantastic and enjoyable stay. If you liked the video and it was useful to you in any way, please consider liking the video and subbing to the channel. If you have any questions, suggestions or just want to chat, please comment below. If you want tips live or just like MMO content in general, you can pop over to my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash dyinglegacy. I'm live a few times a week and I'm a complete catastrophe of a human being. Well, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, guys, and keep being awesome.